All right, and we back. I'm actually going to talk here about the NFL and the trade deadline winners and losers. There were a number of teams that made moves, a number of teams that didn't that we uh, you know, thought we were going to. Let's start off with the winners, uh, the Steelers. Obviously, they wouldn't get Preston Smith and Mike Williams. Preston Smith, I'm not really that high on that move, but didn't cost anything, so I don't think it's a bad move. Mike Williams, I think he makes an immediate impact. Um, he's a big wide receiver. I don't think he's washed. I, I don't really understand what's happening in New York as to why he wasn't getting the ball and why you know he was almost schemed out. Obviously, Preston Smith, he should help the pressure as TJ Watt. Outside of him, they're really not getting much pressure at all. And so I love what the Steelers did at the deadline, just making moves without mortgaging, mortgaging, mortgaging your future, excuse me, to make your team better. Next up, Commanders. Commanders, they went and got Marshawn Lattimore, and if you didn't hear that, Marshawn Lattimore is a superstar. He's going to make an immediate impact. He's one of the best corners in football. Um, if you're the Commanders, I think this was an interesting way to kind of lean all in. Um, winning is never obviously guaranteed, and getting a player of Marshawn Lattimore's caliber, you did give up a third, fourth, and a sixth, which is a lot, but he's a superstar. And, you know, he is 30, I believe. Um, but all these picks are in this draft or this upcoming draft, so, you know, at least going forward, you won't have to worry about that. Um... Even if he is older, I like that value. The defense is 21st in passing yards per attempt, so obviously Lattimore is going to help with that. And then obviously Marshawn Lattimore himself is a winner. I mean, he went from a 2-7 and seven team looking towards the 2025 draft to a 7-2 and two team that's looking to contend. Um, his contract in and of itself doesn't have guaranteed money passed this year. Um, he will be getting paid by the Saints next year, I believe, due to cap restructuring. We'll talk more about the Saints in a minute. Um, but playing well could position himself for a longer-term deal in the offseason. And the biggest bonus for Marshawn Lattimore, he doesn't have to see Mike Evans twice a year. Next up, the Lions. I mean, the Lions, they went the Lions, they went and got Zadarius Smith. Um, Zadarius Smith's going to make an immediate impact. He's an older player, but he's a good player. Only gave up a fifth and a sixth, which is nothing for a starting caliber player. Theoretically, he is a stopgap guy, um, 32, but, you know, if he contributes well, you think he, you know, he might be back on a two-year deal next season. And Detroit has struggled to stop the run. They've allowed 145 yards per game on the ground since Aiden Hutchinson's injury. And Aiden Hutchinson's going to be up at least the rest of the season unless they make the Super Bowl. I think that's his like only return table. And again, you know, maybe he comes back. But I think the Lions, for, for pretty much for nothing, got Zedaria Smith. Love it for them. Again, another winner is Zedaria Smith himself. He went from a 2-17 and that was headed toward a rebuild to a 7-1 and team looking to contend. You still have a lot of tough games for Detroit, but Zedaria Smith, obviously the vibe switch from going from Cleveland to Detroit, got to be great for him. He was, I mean, legitimately probably a cut candidate in Cleveland, just, you know, being older, not being on a contending team, trying to get off money. Um, on a contending team, he's only owed $11 million next year. The Lions could look to retain him. And then at the end of that, he doesn't have to deal with Deshaun Watson or the Cleveland Browns and the whole circus over there. Another set of winners is just receivers in general. I'm going to name off a bunch of receivers that got traded. A bunch of frustrated receivers got traded, right? Mike Williams got traded to the Steelers. Aaron Rodgers hated him. Jonathan Mingo got traded to the Cowboys. Panthers stink. Pay Johnson got traded to the Ravens. The Panthers stink. DeAndre Hopkins got traded to the Chiefs. The Titans stink. Amari Cooper got traded to the Bills. The Browns stink. Devontae Adams got traded to the Jets. The Raiders stink. He loves Aaron Rodgers. I mean, every one of those receivers made some sort of noise or, you know, kind of request to get out. Obviously, Mike Williams, his whole situation, DeAndre Hopkins, was kind of an odd man out. Um, Devontae Adams was very prolific with his requests. And it's good to know that, obviously, like, quarterbacks, if they have an issue, they can get moved pretty quickly and, you know, they have a lot of power. But it's good to, it's good to see for receivers that if they make enough noise, they can still get a change of scenery. And then finally, speaking of receivers, the Chiefs. Chiefs, they're going to talk. Obviously, everybody knows they went and got DeAndre Hopkins. They also traded for Josh Uche um, from the Patriots. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I might be butchering that, but you know who I'm talking about. Hopkins is going to make an immediate impact. Right? He's still got it. He's you know he's older, but he, again, Rishi Rice's injuries have made the Chiefs offense a little more stagnant. You really don't have a dynamic receiver, and I'm not saying DeAndre Hopkins is still the guy from five years ago, but he's a chain mover, and that's that's what you can get with him. Him, you have Kelsey, and then between you know Hardman, Worthy, for, uh, Noah Gray, Justin, Jalen Watson, you're going to get enough out of that offense. And Pacheco's going to come back. Only cost the Chiefs a fifth-round pick. Listen, if he's worth, if he's good this year, it's worth it. If he's good next year, you fleece the Titans. And then Uche is only being paid a million dollars. If he gets legitimately like a single sack in the playoff, it'll be worth that price and the sixth-round pick it costs to get him. So to me, with Mahomes there, you can throw day three picks, you know, two teams for people like this. They've nailed it. Now, I want to talk about the losers. Um, one of the losers that I had was teams looking for like a bench QB. Obviously, Bryce Young and Anthony Richardson both benched. Theoretically, both are still the quarterback of the future in for the Panthers and the Colts, but I, I heard the reports that the Dolphins were looking into Bryce Young. I think that would have been a huge get for Miami. Obviously, Tua is the guy, but Tua, objectively, his, his 
future is going to be clouded for the near future and probably for the rest of his career. And and neither their neither the futures for Richardson or Bryce Young are set in stone. But the teams, obviously the Colts and the Panthers, were not willing to deal, which kind of stinks for both of them because it would be nice to see either of them get a change of scenery. Um, with the 2025 draft not as strong as the 2024 one, I thought maybe more teams would be interested in kind of throwing darts at Richardson or or um, Bryce Young, you know, to see if they wanted a fresh start. But at the end of the day, it's not going to happen. And it, you know, kind of feel bad for Bryce Young and Anthony Richardson. Another loser, the Cowboys. And you're probably like, how the Cowboys traded for um, Mingo. Well, here's how. Dak obviously is headed to IR, so the Cowboys' best chance to stay in the playoff line, and I think they're a playoff team, especially with Dak, and once you make the playoffs, you know, anything can happen. I think the best chance was to lean on the run game and the defense, but not only did they target the wrong skill position, they overpaid for Mingo. Like, if, if you look at the roster objectively, C.D. Lamb, Jalen Tolbert, Jake Ferguson, all three of them, to me, are better players and best, better pass catchers than the person they just traded, I believe, yeah, fourth-round pick for him. I mean, listen, it's not too much of an overpay, but I just, I don't understand it. Another loser, Antonio Pierce. He is in a weird spot in Vegas. He's coaching for his job, but they suck, and he doesn't have the freedom to make the moves to either bottom out. He's kind of stuck in the middle, and, like, they didn't sell anybody besides Adams. They, they didn't improve their offense. He's already coaching for his job, and there's no upside, especially on the offensive side. Gardner Minshew and um, Aiden O'Connell have not shown anything all season. And they obviously fired, you know, Getze, and they remodeled the um, – I'm not looking at it. I'm literally looking at the background. I'm staring off into space. I don't know why I'm looking here. After remodeling the offensive staff, you hope the Raiders figure it out. And if they don't, Pierce is probably gone after the season. I'm also surprised a lot of teams didn't make a move. And I'm going to put all teams like the Giants, the Patriots, the Jaguars. I'm, I know I mentioned the Raiders, but they definitely could have sold off some more. They didn't look to load up on draft capital, right? They're, every one of those teams I mentioned is 2-7. and seven. They should all be looking toward the future. The Giants alone should have offloaded Aziz Ojolari. I'm so bad at pronouncing his name. I'm so sorry. Patriots should have traded KJ. Patriots should have traded KJ Osborne. The Jaguars should have traded Brandon Scherf. And the Raiders should have traded like Jacoby Myers or John Jenkins. There's just too many veterans on these teams that aren't going to help you win in your next phase. That why wouldn't you go to them now? I'm going to call the Jets a loser. I know they traded for Devontae Adams and the vibes were high, but the Jets still look, you know, bad. They often still hasn't figured it out. They're three and six. They have less than a 20% chance to make the playoffs. And of course, it's Aaron Rodgers, so you know you never know what can happen. And and you trade away Mike Williams. You paid him six. I'm looking at this right now. Six point six million. He had 12 catches and 166 yards. Do you want to talk about a terrible return on investment? The Jets, they just need to figure it out. Next up, the next loser I have is the New Orleans cap sheet. Uh, and you're probably like, well, what the hell does that mean? Okay, well, the New Orleans Saints have been in cap hell for God knows how long, right? Um, they restructure Marshawn Lattimore's contract. And when you do that, you essentially take money and you kind of like stretch it across years. And because they traded him, all that restructured cap hit that was going to be down in 26 and 27, it gets pushed to 2025. So I believe, I'm looking at the numbers here, he was supposed to have um, $10 million each year. It's a $31.6 million cap hit next year. He won't even be playing for them. So Marshall Lattimore is going to get paid, paid. They're going to be $68.4 million over the cap next year. And he's not going to even be playing. So it's just like trading him really screwed up their future. The Saints, obviously, you're trending toward a rebuild, so you're going to probably, Cam Jordan's probably going to be gone, or if he doesn't retire. I mean, the whole team's going to look different in the next two years, but it's just, the Saints, like, I get trading him for something, and they got a decent haul back, but it's just like, what are they doing? Finally, the last loser I have for this is Zach Moss, the Cincinnati Bengals running back. Really, he got hurt right before the deadline. That hurts your stock. The Bengals felt like they needed to make a move to show up the running game behind Chase Brown. And Gil Herbert, who's a very similar back to Zach Moss, he was all, again, Moss was already losing his job to Chase Brown. They traded for Khalil Herbert. This was the Spengals' second ever in-season trade acquisition. They've made more trades, but they've shelled out players. But this second time in franchise history where they've brought someone in. And to me, to, to do that, it has to mean something for the Bengals and Zach Moss's future with them. So again, we had a lot of winners. We had a lot of losers. The NFL season is gearing up to be really fun down the stretch. Let me know what you think about the trade deadline. Let me know if you would see videos like this more. Let me know what team you thought would or lost in the comments down below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Find out if they're right.